Hello, my name is Christopher Anatra. You know me as the Quantum Businessman. Welcome to this series of videos I've titled Symphony of Realities. Each of these videos or acts are interconnected like a symphony to help you understand how reality and your consciousness work within our holographic universe and how the Mandela effect is exposing it all. I've created this symphony for you, the reality programmers of the Dreamweave, to help you remember who you are as you walk in this lucid dream. Role players in a role player game. Change the role and change the game. Welcome to our fringe epilogue. Because so much has happened while these fringe intermission videos are being released, I want to bring you all up to speed before we begin our next act. What is an epilogue? An epilogue is a speech at the end of a play, or in this case, a symphony, that serves as a comment on or a conclusion to what has happened. And a lot has happened since the French intermissions were released. Before we begin the second half of our Symphony of Realities, I invite you to enjoy my comments and conclusions, which will help tie things together before we move on. First, I want to talk to you about Topsy, then the Tiger King, then Martha the Passenger Pigeon, then a new mission from Earth to help the Northern White Rhino, then the Golden Penguin, and lastly, Angel Numbers and Impulse Control. But first, our dear elephant guardian angel, Topsy. When these fringe intermission videos were being released, there was a snowstorm in Connecticut. At my house, I have a hot tub. And in my opinion, the best time to relax and enjoy that is during or right after it snows. It's incredible to see the falling snow turn to mist as it evaporates from the heat about five to six feet above the water. What? You didn't think the quantum businessman could manifest a hot tub time machine? While I was in the hot tub, I noticed one of the outside lights of my house was emitting a yellow or gold type of glow. I focused my gaze and saw the image of an elephant. I didn't expect to see that. It was forward facing, looking straight at me. I wondered if it was Topsy because it didn't have that circus harness over its head. And yes, it was Topsy. She obviously no longer wanted to be associated with being a circus elephant, so the residual image she was portraying was of a free and powerful elephant. She had messages for me, and I could feel her love. She wanted to express how much she loves you, and that we are getting closer to the version of Earth that has free energy for all. Just keep raising your frequency by expanding your consciousness with an open heart. Since I started making these videos, I've had at least three powerful spirits visit me. Besides Topsy, the first was astronaut Gus Grissom, who I spoke about in my video titled Moon Angel. Gus had spoken out about the safety issues with the NASA project to get to the moon before the Russians. Gus was to be the first man to walk on the moon. He and his two fellow astronauts were consumed in fire and died in their capsule while doing a test run at Cape Canaveral. Next, it was John Jacob Astor IV. John died when the Titanic sank. He was considered the richest man in the world at the time of his death. Gus and John both communicate with me from time to time, and they make quite a team. With just one annoyance, to get my attention, John will pinch me on the inside of my thigh. It hurts like a shock of electricity, but it gets my immediate attention. Then it seems that Gus learned that technique from him, and he'll do the same pinch to get my attention. Gus gives me messages about what's going on with the moon. These types of body sensations are called nudges. What is a nudge? A nudge is a gentle prod, typically with one's elbow, in order to draw their attention to something. Learning how to interpret a nudge is an important part of your awakening process because chances are you've been having them your whole life, but had no idea 
that something was trying to communicate with you. For example, do you ever feel random body sensations? Perhaps a muscle twitching? I would get twitches and sometimes gentle shocks on my feet, never having any idea of what that was. But I've learned how to do a process to track it back. It allows me to figure out who is contacting me and how to interpret the message. In a future video, I'll go into more detail about this. The sensations I would get on my feet always seem to track back to Earth. So right away, when my feet start getting sensations, it's usually a message from Earth. And the stronger the sensation, the more urgent the message. While I was previewing the final edit of the Fringe video on manned animals, Fringe Level 1, when I got to the part that has the Tiger King excerpt, I got a sharp electric pain in my neck. My first thought was if that was Gus or John trying to get my attention, but it wasn't. I tracked it back, and it was the higher self of the Tiger King. The Tiger King? Now, the Tiger King is still alive, as far as I know. But his higher self, actually all of our higher selves, exist in our hearts internally and externally in a macrocosm of expanded chess moves through the chess games of Earth and beyond. Our higher self can expand in consciousness to interact and influence through cause and effect, learning and growing, outside of linear time. I have to admit, I've never even watched a full episode of The Tiger King. I've just seen some funny video clips here and there, and the show appears to be a train wreck. Ladies and gentlemen, before you hear it on the news, I'm gonna tell you myself, about an hour ago, we had an incident where one of the employees stuck their arm through the cage and the tiger tore her arm off. I can give you your money back or I can give you a rain check. The message I received was that in the future, the Tiger King will become aware of me by watching some of my videos. Who knew? This is because our higher selves exist outside of linear time and can see the past, present, and future. How did you manage to access all this information? Electrical impulses. Every cell knows and talks to every other cell. They exchange a thousand bits of information between them per second. Cells group together, forming a giant web of communication, which in turn forms matter. Cells get together, take on one form, deform, reform. Makes no difference, it's all the same. Humans consider themselves unique, so they've rooted their whole theory of existence on their uniqueness. One is their unit of measure, but it's not. All social systems we put into place are a mere sketch. One plus one equals two, that's all we've learned. But one plus one has never equaled two. There are, in fact, no numbers and no letters. We've codified our existence to bring it down to human size, to make it comprehensible. We've created a scale so that we can forget its unfathomable scale. But if humans are not the unit of measure, and the world isn't governed by mathematical laws, what governs all that? Film a car speeding down a road. Speed up the image infinitely and the car disappears. So what proof do we have of its existence? Time gives legitimacy to its existence. Time is the only true unit of measure. It gives proof to the existence of matter. Without time, we don't exist. So at the exact moment that excerpt was playing on my screen, is when contact was initiated. By the way, that shock of electricity on my neck hurt. So I was like, can you tone that down, please? The Tiger King appears to be an influential spirit with lifetime interactions in the soul family collective consciousness of experiences that originate with feline mammalian humanoids. Basically, a cat person from such places as the Lyran and Orion constellations. For those of you unfamiliar with Lyrans, they are the English title for the species from the constellation Lyra. They are a feline, large cat humanoid, higher sentience and functioning species. 
Perhaps he was a Tiger King of sorts in another reality or in the Lyra star cluster. Now, here is what he wanted me to convey. He is concerned with the survival and fertility of tigers and other big cat felines. It appears that tigers and other big cats will get a big fertility push when specific feline, god, goddess, pyramids, temples, and mountains that look suspiciously like pyramids in Egypt are fully turned on. When I was in Egypt in 2018, the government unburied a small old city near the Sphinx, and without telling anyone why, they covered it back up with sand. The Egyptian government does not appear to be very concerned with making new discoveries of what is beneath the sands of Egypt. I'm sure that when things are more freed up in Egypt, there will be many new discoveries to explore our past. How can we turn on these pyramids and temples? A group of awakening people doing a ceremony near them can activate them. If that group is very advanced, this can also be done at a distance without the need to travel to Egypt. The larger the group, the better for less drama using the power of unity. Also, the people involved should have a connection to the pyramids and the temples and to Egypt now or in the past. This makes it far more powerful with an increased range of effect. They should be united with the spirits motivated through time who truly want the well-being of that pyramid or temple. This is because you'll be dealing with the spirits who want to repress the pyramid from turning on. The grid that the pyramids are on has been wounded by dark sorcerers taking them over for their power. Positive types of ceremonies we can do to counter the dark sorcery can include loving detachment, meditation, yoga, stretching, dance, toning, magic, vision work, emotional transmutation, and light language. By the way, the topic of light language is something I want to cover in the future because I feel it's very important. The ceremony would include fully grounding the pyramid, then bringing up sacred energy from Earth's central core. So you can see that this fringe epilogue is just as fringe as our fringe intermission. There you go, Tiger King, otherwise known as Joe Exotic. Message delivered. So no more shocks on the neck? Don't be a pain in my neck. I was Joe's campaign manager for about a year and a half. Uh, it was, it was a, the worst experience of my life. The Tiger King, quite the train wreck. The next topic to share with you is about Martha the Passenger Pigeon. In Fringe Level 4, titled Return of the Passenger Pigeon, a lot of impact to the timeline was made, and it's because of you. For those of you who don't know, Martha was the name given to the last known passenger pigeon who died at the Cincinnati Zoo in 1914. From many personal messages I received after I posted that video, many of you had direct communication with her. This happened while you meditated or in your dream time. Martha's message was consistently, don't worry, I'll be back. Some of you reported seeing a red rose with her. Others reported dreaming about the Fae and magic angels and things connected to them. There was a lot of Fae activity in those days after that video was released. Why? Because we came together in unity. Our higher selves or super consciousness, as the amazing reality programmers you are, even if you don't consciously understand it, came together in unity to begin the process of merging timelines to possibly be a big factor allowing Martha species, the passenger pigeon, to come back. What is a timeline? I think its simplest explanation is another reality, another dream, a potential in the field in a different vibration. Remember Tesla's famous phrase, if you want to understand the universe, think of energy, frequency, and vibration. Could it be possible that timelines exist in their own vibration? Like the field of the moments of now branching out to the residual frequencies of the past 
and the potential frequencies of the future possibilities. Can we make a looking glass to look into these timelines? Might we already have one in our DNA? And that the merging of another timeline is as simple as changing your vibration. And now, I present to you possible evidence of merging timelines where the passenger pigeon did not go extinct in 1914 like we were told. Is it possible that a small flock of passenger pigeons are now existing in a remote section of Michigan called the Upper Peninsula? Here is new information that has surfaced since the passenger pigeon video. In the February 14, 1930 issue of the journal Science, multiple sightings of the passenger pigeon are documented. Michigan University bacteriologist Professor Philip Hadley, in the company of a Mr. Ford, an old friend familiar with the land, had been hunting in a virtually uninhabited wilderness within Michigan's Upper Peninsula. They had been hunting there for a while when Ford drew Hadley's attention to a bird perched close by and declared that it was a passenger pigeon. Professor Hadley was very familiar with the passenger pigeon since he was young. Then, two other reports surfaced by people familiar with the passenger pigeon that a flock of about 15 were sighted in Michigan. Another report surfaced in 1965 of passenger pigeons being spotted in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Then, on a website named horaconbirds.com, there were recently claimed passenger pigeon sightings chronicled online in 2014, 2015, and 2016. Remember how I said some of you receive messages from Martha such as, don't worry, I'll be back. Is a flower garden of merging timelines happening before our very eyes? Time will tell, but I believe yes. I'll leave some links below in the description area for your own research. You can even set a Google News Alert to automatically bring you any news related to the passenger pigeon and passenger pigeon sightings. Let's imagine a flock that's a mile wide and 200 miles long. And the front birds are coming down to glean from the field. And imagine being ahead of this crashing wave of biology working its way up the center of the continent. And the eruption of wings, it was so loud that these men with guns were terrified. There were tens of millions, hundreds of millions, billions of passenger pigeons. Don't stop sending them help as they still need to expand and grow resiliently until they reach a population of around 33,333. It appears that once they can reach over 33,000, they will be able to support themselves and it will be harder for them to be taken back out of the timeline. Let's keep sending the passenger pigeon those 10 things I mentioned in the Fringe Level 3 video, including life force energy, survival energy, fertility, including the discovery of a fertility place of power or womb chakra, and more exploration in migration energy. How does this make you feel? Are you starting to feel empowerment to help Earth when we come together in unity? Can you feel the magic of the passenger pigeon? Great job, everyone. If you remember in Fringe Level 2, Extinct Animals, I spoke about how it appears the dodo bird is coming back. The evidence I cited for this included the last known dodo appears to have lived until 1715, which is more than 100 years after many of us were taught they were extinct. Then, the reason for their extinction went from humans who hunted them for their meat, no longer being the reason. It's now rats and cats. Rats who would eat the egg of the dodo and cats who would kill the baby dodo chicks. Humans now hate the taste of dodo meat. And then finally in this timeline, we have a preserved soft tissue head of a dodo bird. When many of us were taught that only drawings of the dodo were the only way we knew what they looked like. 
And now I present to you new evidence to further show something special is happening with the dodo bird. It's called the Nicobar pigeon. What is a Nicobar pigeon? For myself and possibly you, it's a new type of rainbow mandanimal that has just appeared on the timeline. What is so special about the Nicobar pigeon? It's the closest living relative to the dodo. So not only does it appear the dodo is coming back, but also species of animals connected to it are on their way back as our blooming flower garden of timelines expands. I want to interject here something in common I've been learning about those of us experiencing the Mandela effect. And I understand that different theories have been put forth, such as being more empathetic or perhaps even a certain blood type to see the Mandela effect. However, from what I can discern and would want to add to the conversation is that many of us are reality programmers. Just as a computer programmer or software engineer can observe glitches in the code they wrote, even if the user of the software is unaware, they jump out immediately to us as something wrong. The reality should not glitch like that. Deep down inside, when we observe a Mandela effect, we inherently know something is not right. And as the Mandela effects just don't stop, we begin to see through the veils of deception and begin to seek answers. Again, this is just my opinion, but explains a lot for myself. I wanna thank all of you that posted in the comments and shared links in the Return of the Passenger Pigeon video. Thank you for sharing your experiences and research you had done on your own about the Passenger Pigeon. That really showed you care. It even got the attention of Earth, who was so impressed with our unity to bring back this magical species, so impressed that she gave us another mission. And that's the way this works. Prove yourself in a mission and she will provide more missions with more benefits. Earth is concerned about the northern white rhino, which I spoke about in Fringe Level 1, Mandanimals. The white rhinoceros is an endangered species and also the most social of all rhinos. Currently, there is a population of about 20,000 southern white rhinos, but there are only two northern white rhinos left. They're both females. Hello and welcome to Animal Watch. And this week it's a very important episode because we're meeting the very last two northern white rhinos on planet Earth. I'll leave a link below to this video you can watch about the last two northern white rhinos. Note that the southern white rhino is a subspecies of the northern rhino. In the wild, subspecies normally do not breed together and have differing characteristics. The Akashic records reveal that the white rhino is a super protector. I've been discovering that most white or albino animals that are appearing on the timeline such as the white cougar of Brazil, are super protectors. What are the Akashic Records? I've spoken about it before, but the best way to describe it is the internet of the universe. It is memories and information stored in light. The white rhino is a protector of all time and space. Everyone, light, neutral, and dark, benefits from them living, thriving, and not being hunted. Having the white rhinos on our planet is a great benefit to Earth. It allows Earth and everyone here to become stronger, more protected, and resilient. The northern white rhino appears to be very special to Earth. You can think of the white rhino as a librarian holding the maps and codes for time and space. The northern version protects and holds very important time and space information, and Earth does not want to lose that on the surface level. Because of this situation and others involving extinct or endangered animal species, and because we are doing so well as we came together in unity to assist them, I'm going to create a series of videos I'm titling 
Earth missions. It will be a short video you can watch, probably less than 10 minutes, where your higher self will be given specific instructions in how to help. Our first Earth mission video will be titled, Earth Mission Number One, Save the Northern White Rhino. I will be posting this video soon with others to follow as I get the nudge from Earth regarding which species she wants us to consider next. I'm going to ask that you share these videos with your friends and family, especially those that are concerned about endangered and extinct species. I'll put them together in a neutral way so that even those not affected by the Mandela effect or don't understand quantum physics concepts such as the observer changes the observed from the double slit experiment and is Schrodinger's cat alive or dead? Let's do this for science, for wisdom, for testing limitations, for awakening to lucidity in this dream, to know more about the nature of reality. Let's do this for Earth. Let's do this for humanity and show that we can make a difference as we come together in unity. At the start of this video, I spoke about nudges. While the information was coming together about how we can help the northern white rhino, I started getting mild electric shocks on my left shin. I wondered what that was and realized it had to do with Mount Kenya in Africa. It was easy to pinpoint because the shock started as soon as the Mount Kenya information was coming forward. Mount Kenya is the second tallest mountain in Africa, and it's on the list of the things we need to do with saving the northern white rhino. It has places of power that need to be opened up, and the mountain itself has a consciousness. Some may call this the spirit of Mount Kenya, which is a guardian and the main consciousness of that territory. The video I'm creating for it will have more details, but I wanted to share this with you because if we get a body sensation or a nudge directly after something comes into our awareness, chances are it's that consciousness which is trying to get our attention. Next, I wanna talk about the yellow penguin or actually the golden penguin. You may have noticed in the Mandanimal episode of our Fringe Intermission that I showed a photo of a very unique penguin which appeared in the timeline. This special and rare king penguin was spotted on South Georgia Island, one of the islands off the coast of Antarctica and south of Argentina. You'll remember in the Fringe episode I titled The Golden Timeline that signs such as the golden monolith, which appeared in Colombia, are signposts to help us understand that we are on the path to the golden timeline to follow the yellow brick road. So why is the appearance of the golden penguin so important? Again, it's another signpost. I read it to mean that we are now in the top 10% of all timelines. Another golden creature, which recently appeared in our flower garden of blooming timelines, is the golden tortoise beetle found in southeastern Asia. From what I can read, there should be as many as two more rare yellow or golden animals that appear to show us we are on better and better timelines. What could these other golden animals be? I'm not certain, but the image of a golden whale came into my mind as a possibility. Let's be observant and see what appears in our reality next. This golden penguin, which appeared off the coast of Antarctica, reminded me of a Mandela effect which blew my mind. 
In episode three of my Quantum Businessman series, I spoke about how we have shifted into a timeline where the public can visit Antarctica and has been able to do so since the 1960s. This is a big Mandela effect for myself and others because in a previous timeline, only the military and approved scientists were allowed to go anywhere near that continent. It would have been nearly impossible for someone like myself to go there and not be arrested or immediately turned away. However, in this timeline, not only can you travel there since the 1960s, even take luxury cruises there, but I've discovered that Sports Illustrated did two photo shoots for their famous swimsuit calendar with Kate Upton in 2012 and 2017. In order to complete our theme of seven continents, we needed to get to the seventh continent. Antarctica was critical for us. The model that we brought there would have to be able to hold her own against the grandeur that is Antarctica. Kate Upton is that woman. It appears that in our current timeline, Antarctica is very popular. Kate Upton went there twice, and this was one of Sports Illustrated most popular issues and swimsuit calendars that I've never heard of. Is this a Mandela effect for you too? I'll leave a link below where you can watch a short documentary about her trip. It's really fascinating to observe all these timeline changes.